XS Extraordinary Superior Gundam. Hey again, everybody, Robert184, 2Rs2Bs, Gundam.tk, continuing my look at the Master Grade XS Gundam. You've already seen most of the parts and the mobile suit, but now it's time to turn this monster of a mobile suit into a monster of a transforming vehicle. Just to explain the time skip that you may see here in between some of the videos is because when I was building these shoulders, I broke them not once, but twice and had to order the parts, uh, which takes time, of course, which is why it's taken so long to get to the transformation stage. So be very, very careful, especially with these blue parts. When you put them in together, there are things that actually run through here and provide the rotating points. Everything about those can break. Don't put the screws in too tight. Make sure you're putting in everything just right. Follow the directions or you're going to be waiting months before you actually get to turn this into the monster it should be. This should be mounted on the base before you do it, but it looks like you're going to take off the arms, the legs, and the smart gun before actually pulling it right off the base itself. He still is respectably large even when he's split apart into his component parts. Next you'll pull off this part of the waist section, which detaches quite easily, and then pop up this part on the chest. Detach this part all together, close up the cockpit, and then you should be able to pull this out. So even though it's attached in there pretty well, this whole part is going to detach eventually. Just to note that over time, you'll notice that these stickers stay on worse and worse. Something that you'd never want to see on a newer Master Grade. You take these two wing sections and bend them out, and then retake this part which you detached earlier, and put it back on. Then you'll notice that there were two very small parts here that you pop out and up and then you bend this part down and I gotta say that seeing parts this small in a transformation of a Gundam this big does not fill me with any confidence whatsoever. The action base can actually be positioned in a few ways but you're gonna take it out of mobile suit mode and put this part in the front, this part in the back and then you can cover up this part just to make it look a little bit better. You'll attach the G-Core here the same way that you do at the very beginning when you're building the model, but I noticed that there were quite a few stress marks as these things fit pretty tightly, so it's not something that I'd recommend attaching and detaching too often. The next thing to deal with is this chest section here, which already the instruction manuals aren't as clear as it could be. Looks like you're supposed to slide this down and then get the head to go down. Make sure you get the V-fins out of the way before you do that. So the way it should work is that you bend this yellow part down, which is a little bit tricky, and then you're actually able to push this whole head unit down. And if it doesn't go smoothly, you're probably doing something wrong. And then you're going to pull this whole part up above the head. And it actually has a better swing mechanism than I expected, and it locks into place, and actually looks pretty good with that part there that previously just protected the back of the neck. Bring up these panels on the bottom, and then flip this part, rotate it forward. Now sometimes these instructions are about as clear as mud, but you're going to end up detaching this part here and then swinging these off to the side, but I've already had one fall off, so be careful before you bring down this whole chest section down below. There are an incredible amount of complex mechanisms here inside this chest unit. You've got this part here which is attached to this that is going to end up bending it down if you get it into just the right position and plug in to this poly cap and we can see that things are starting to take shape. I'm sort of getting more incredulous as we go here because it looks like these tiny little points are going to hold this whole part onto the core base here. And believe it or not, those tiny little things actually did it. They're not too hard to get in, but don't expect this part to line up with this body. You've just got to bend it in a place that those pegs will actually get attached. On the inside here, you're going to pop out those two little things there, which are going to bend these whole things back to attach around to there, apparently. It is possible, but it sure doesn't feel good getting it there. And it's really tricky to actually get both of those attached in there. You're probably going to have to push it down with a pencil or something like that. It's beginning to take shape, which is encouraging. However, I am not pleased by the prospect of having to turn this back into a mobile suit without clear directions after the fact. After you reattach that chest protector there and position that attachment, you can get the smart gun into place. Bend the trigger back here and get this part and pop this in so that these are at just the right distance that you can actually attach it down here on two separate points. Yet another part that's just frustrating to get it lined up just the right way. Next up for the legs, which if they were detached, have about that much of a bend to the knee, 
but for our transformation, you're going to be more concerned with popping that heel down and then getting this uh, ankle guard up and out of the way. To walk you through the whole leg transformation might be a little tricky, but you're going to take this leg and it's going to end up looking like that by basically you pulled, first you put the foot down flat, then you pull this part down and it actually covers up this gray part. After you've brought down the knees and locked that into place, you then bring the thighs forward and get this cannon up and out of the way. After some rotating of the hips, you'll have the guns in place, the feet in place, and they're really not gray anymore, are they? But these actually don't do a bad job of hiding the fact that they are just Gundam legs. Down below on the Gundam itself, you'll notice that this hip part is still sticking out, and you're just going to take the leg and plug it in as if this wasn't the parts former that it seems to be. With the weapons on and all going forward, it really is starting to take shape. To get the arms transformed, you're going to start by detaching the propellant tanks here. Next up, you're going to flip this part down, rotate it around, detach this part, which is a little bit sticky, so you're going to want to be careful, and then you're going to do some flipping around with these fins. Then after bending the thumb out of the way, you're actually going to do some fiddling here with the wrist, and then bend this part in, before, and then getting this whole part to flip out before repositioning this. I'm actually impressed with the amount of details that is revealed when you pop open the shoulders and then after you rotate down these incredibly looking decals here, you're going to lock this down into place with this blue part completely, completely covering up the fact that this is a Gundam arm. I don't think I've seen a Gundam transform this well, and this part anyway. The tail fin ends up bending down and there's a very tiny little corner piece there which is going to plug into a slot there, and this should be the completed arm. For the propellant tank, open this part up, close this part by putting it inside, seal this up, and then get ready to attach it to the arm. Once you've done that, it's actually going to attach fairly easily into place before you're going to open up another one of these magic little tiny attachment parts, which seem to hold this massive beast all together. You'll notice those loud clickings which can make you nervous the first time that you do pretty much everything on this. I have to give them credit though that that arm, shoulder, fin, and propellant tank can fold up into something that looks completely non-armish. And it still keeps the decals out. Finally, when both of these are all put together properly, you'll notice that there are two attachment points here, one for the regular shoulders and one where that extra little part that you bent out with a very loud and scary click will attach. And the final step is to bend out these parts here and Hope that the stickers have stayed on. Now I can't tell you exactly how long this takes if you're gonna do it on your own because I've got this filming in between, but it was certainly a long and a little bit frustrating transformation. But the end result is, well, what do you think? I really liked it when I put the legs on. I liked it how those boosters up there worked and I liked how the arms went together, but it's actually when you put it together, the whole looks like less than the sum of the parts to me. I was actually impressed with how detailed it was along the way, but now it just seems like the propellant tanks are hiding all of that impressive inner machinery that looked so good when it was first getting transformed. Here's a view from the top. You can see that there's some internal and open stuff that you can see down there, a whole bunch of hinges, small attachments. I don't really have the propellant tanks on using both of the attachments. The one shoulder mount seems to be enough. The boosters look okay, I guess you can adjust these however you choose. The wings, you could stick out the other ones down below that you see up there at the front, but I've just got them out here per the manual. And the legs, well there's only one beam saber in there, in the knees. So what do you think? Over the course of the transformation, the legs have fallen down. One of them fit in really well, one of them didn't. You can see that the smart gun is going to detach and droop quite a bit. And the propellant tanks, despite only being attached on one point, seem to be okay so far.
So that is the G Cruiser, which as far as I know, is the biggest transforming mobile suit, the biggest vehicle mode out of all the regular Gundams that you can have, and you can see the Gundam Sentinel book there in the background. So what do you think about that so far? Well, I can tell you what I think in my verdict, which is coming up next, where I'll talk about all the good and bad parts about the MS and this G Cruiser mode. So stay tuned for that. So thanks for watching this, everybody. Robert184, Gundam.tk. Love to hear what you think with a comment down below or on my front page. And as always, please hit like if you do and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time. There is no stunt too dangerous for Jackie Chan Gundam.